keep your eye on the prize and pay attention to long-term winners. I'm talking about Starbucks, which barely got dinged today. Not only are these guys winners, but they made a commitment to continue winning by hiring the best of the best. Roughly five years ago, Starbucks made a pledge to hire 10,000 veterans by 2018. Do you know they hit that target by the end of 2016? Then last year, the company set out a new goal, hiring 25,000 veterans or spouses of veterans by 2025. Just a few days ago, we learned that they'd already hired 21,000 people. A lot of people talk about supporting the troops. Starbucks is actually doing it. And hey, maybe they've got some good karma, because a week and a half ago, Starbucks reported a fabulous blowout quarter and sent its stock fly into the stratosphere. So let's take a closer look with Kevin Johnson. He's the CEO of Starbucks, who is coming to us from one of Starbucks' military family stores in San Diego. To hear more about what he's doing for our veterans and where his company is headed. Mr. Johnson, welcome back to Mad Money. Hey, Jim, good afternoon. I'm joining you from a Starbucks right outside Marine Corps Air Station Miramar. So it's great to be here today. All right, so tell me about how you recruited these people to come to work for Starbucks and what you're doing nationally for veterans. Well, you know, Jim, as you mentioned uh, in the introduction, we made a commitment five years ago uh, to hire 10,000 veterans or military spouses. Uh, and we did that recognizing that the number of men and women that have served our country for, for multiple tours of duty for many, many years were transitioning back into civilian life. And we felt like we have an opportunity to play a role. So we put an infrastructure together to reach out and recruit uh, these veterans and military spouses. And thus far, as you said, we now uh, are at 21,000 uh, that we've hired on a commitment for 25,000 by the year 2025. And I'll tell you, Jim, these veterans make us a better company, and they make these better communities. How hard is it to get to the vets? And what are the obstacles for veterans to find jobs where you have really made a commitment to try to help all of them, not necessarily going to Starbucks? Well, you know, one way we reach our veterans is, you know, we've built now 50 Starbucks military family stores that are either on or near military bases around the country. And that's one place where we've hired a number of veterans, military spouses, and they have the opportunity to connect with veterans in their communities in these stores, make them aware of the opportunities that we have for them to join Starbucks. And it's not just joining Starbucks. It's joining Starbucks with the full range of benefits we offer, health care. And one of the benefits that we find uh, really is attractive to veterans is our college achievement uh, program that we have in partnership with ASU. Uh, so we put out a, a broad, uh, broad set of, uh, of uh, initiatives to reach these veterans, recruit them, and then create an opportunity for them uh, to transition into civilian life and have a great career. Now, you have donned the apron, as I like to say, put on the green apron and worked directly with people. How are the veterans, what do they like to work with? Well, these are fantastic people. These are people that work in the service of others. These are people that are mission-driven. These are people that care about getting results as a team. They're resourceful, they're creative, and they are phenomenal Starbucks partners. And I'm always proud to put on the green apron and, and serve next to one of our military veterans uh, or military spouses. Uh, they are fantastic, fantastic Starbucks partners. Well, I'd be remiss not to give you a chance to talk about the turn. And the turn is real. Engineered by you, bought back a lot of stock in the 50s. Now the stock's in the high 60s. Isn't going down despite the turmoil of the market. Why don't you give me some of the thoughts about how to turn around an organization? Because that is not an easy feat. Well, Jim, you know that this, this whole uh, turnaround started 18 months ago with a whole set of initiatives to streamline the company so that we could get more focused on the core value drivers of Starbucks. And so, you know, with, with the transitions we made of a number of retail markets, with uh, the Global Coffee Alliance, with Nestle, with a number of business simplification moves, we're now putting the entire focus of our leadership team, our deployment of capital, into the things that matter the most. And uh, if you look at the results that we've had in our two largest markets, the U.S. and China, you know, we're making good progress there. Uh, we admit there's still more to do, but really posted some good numbers. And then certainly the Global Coffee Alliance with Nestle is something that is just now kicking in. And I think that's going to pay dividends uh, for years and years to come uh, for Starbucks and for Nestle. And you obviously believe in the organization because you, you took some of the money that you got from them and really were a voracious buyer of stock in the low 50s because you believed in your team. 
Well, that's right, Jim. When you're driving a growth at scale agenda and the stock price was as low as it was, we were very aggressive in buying that stock because we believe in Starbucks as a brand, we believe in the strategy we are on, and we are now delivering against that. And I think shareholders have seen that, and I think that's part of what uh, caused the stock to move so much here over the last week. But we're playing the long game. And so, you know, much of this uh, buying back our stock is the acknowledgement that we think we've got a, one of the world's most admired and trusted brands, and we've got the right strategy to really drive the growth agenda here over the next several years. We have so many uh, problems every day, it seems, with China. You've been there. Starbucks is a huge employer. What is the temperature that you see between the United States and China? Well, you know, Jim, I was in China last week uh, and spent several days in Shanghai and uh, had the opportunity to really connect with a number of uh, of key leaders and business leaders and our partners in China. You know, and certainly, you know, we operate in 78 countries around the world. And so we deal with geopolitical situations all the time. You know, we're not immune to them, but because we really have built uh, Starbucks in China for China, it really is operating as an entity in China that's relevant to the consumer, to the culture. And we're playing the long game. So we haven't seen any significant impacts from the uh, geopolitical situation between the U.S. and China. Uh, but that said, we're not immune, but we're going to stay focused to our plan and execute and play the long game. You know, let me ask you about business versus government, Kevin. It seems like right now that business is playing more of an ambassadorial role than government itself, uh, and not just in the United States, but around the world. Business is a force of good, isn't it? Yeah, I think so, Jim. I, I actually think the relationships that we have with, uh, with our partners in China, Starbucks partners in China, but also Chinese companies. You know, we, we did, I did a partnership with the Alibaba Group, uh, you know, China's largest tech company, and uh, the relationship I have with Daniel and their leadership team is phenomenal. And we're just trying to, we work together to find solutions. We work together to find things that are win-win for both, both companies and for our customers. And so I think by engaging with sort of an attitude of optimism and how can we collaborate, you know, to create a, a better environment for all, we can find great paths forward. All right, uh, last question. Do you get asked a lot of people by whatever country you go to, is your former CEO, Howard Schultz, going to run for president? And we sure wish he did. Is that a constant question to you? You know, Jim, I get that question a lot, and I think Howard has, uh, has been very clear that, you know, he's evaluating a range of, uh, of possibilities for this next chapter in his life, and I always leave those questions to Howard, and I stay focused on Starbucks. Well, and that's probably why Starbucks' and stock has been so great. I want to thank you for everything you've done for people who have served for our, for our nation. Thank you so much to Kevin Johnson. He is doing a fantastic job and doing it with the men and women who have served our country. Thank you, sir. Man, money's back after the break. <laughs> Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.